Hello, friends, neighbors, countrymen. Gather round. It is time to bring your love, bring your joy, bring your libations and all your stress in the world to the porch. We are the Dudes with Brews. My name is Drew. My trusty companion's name is Robert. And together we, 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 we talk. We say things. We talk about topics. Topics that you might talk about. Typical conversation, banter, language, all used. There's weird noises coming from your end there, Rob. Uh, this is Dudes with Brews on a Porch. Uh, cue it. It was like there was like robot noises coming. It's gone now. It's probably uh, because my window's open, and I'm afraid to move now because if I do, then I might lose the microphone. Might lose the microphone. Where we're struggling a little bit with the uh, with the mic, but that's okay. Or with the uh, technology once again, it's not on our side. But <laughs> no, not today. Um, I'm, I mean, I'm, I did get the mic working on the phone, so I mean that's something. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Just um, means I have to I have to hold the phone perfectly still. Yes, you have to be very careful. Um, okay, so I I need you to make a choice for me. I'm, I'm feeling indecisive. I went to the beer store today. I got I got some beers for future episodes, including this one right now. Now I have two choices that I've narrowed them down to. I have the. Uh, the Dogfish Head 120 minute IPA. Those noises are throwing me off. <laughs> um, it's okay. My computer's work. It's starting to work. Okay, we'll put, we're gonna put this on pause for a second. All right. Okay. We are back in action, and we are coming at you live in the moments in which we are recording, but not live in the moment of you listening. That's how the way the world works. I am indecisive. I need choices made for me. And what better person to make the choices of my life for me than um, my trusty compadre, Rob. Rob, here it is. Two beers to choose from. One of them, the Dogfish Head 120-minute IPA. Highly sought after. Beer. This is a beer. This is a, one of those unusual beers in which it's an IPA that you can um, put in your cellar, meaning you can you can age it. Most IPAs have a, a, a you know a shelf life or whatever. As soon as they put them in the can in the bottom, they ship they ship them out. They're ready to be drank. This one can be drank right now, or it can be stored and you can drink it years later. And that it'll you'll have a different flavor profile. You'll have a different alcohol content. Currently, this one is at 15.5 ABV for an, for an IPA. That's a lot. Um, Wait, so does the alcohol content go up or down? You, I think it goes up a little bit when you age it. Would it would go up. I don't, I don't know if it could go. I don't know. I, I'm showing how little I know about how alcohol, fermentation, brewing, other buzzwords that craft brew people know. Yeah. Throw them in there. And it's I don't a, know how any of that works. That's okay. Uh, so and this is also the, the season of the IPAs. We're getting into summer. Uh, so I'm choosing between two IPAs here. One of them we you just heard about. This next one, it's also the season of strawberries. It is the New Orthodox India I, uh, India Pale Ale Ale Series, the M43, but it is the Strawberry Tart. It is a Strawberry Tart New England IPA. Now, you have a New England IPA as well, but I'm leaving it up to you. Which one should I drink? You know, I'm trying not to. Uh, I'm trying to be more patient, more stoic. Yeah. Uh, uh, with my decision making, I'm trying not to give in to temptation. So, uh, on your behalf, I'm going to say you let that beer, the, the one, the 120 minute IPA, mm -hmm. sit. I, I let, let it, it sit. Let it sit for now. Yeah. All I'm right. going to say, Drew, let it stew. 
I'll let it stew for a little bit. I, I, I was foolish and only bought one bottle. I could have bought eleven dollars though. That's a lot of that's a lot. Um I was looking at like a fifteen dollar uh IPA uh, uh, for for the show, and then I saw this can for the Evil Twin Brewing, and, and I was like, my my Francisco made a joke about it, and uh, I was like, okay, I'm in. Well, as I pour this, why don't you talk about that uh, said can? Uh, well, it's a very out of whack rendition. It looks like it's so that painting of the two people, the one guy with the pitchfork. Yeah. You know the famous old old painting with the guy, the farmer with the pitchfork and his wife and the house in the background. Um, they clearly did like a, 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 a putting their faces on it. Whoever uh, runs this brewery or made this beer, so it looks very warped. The picture. Okay. Um, and it's called Corner of George Street and Shawmut Road, mm-hmm. which I love a long I love a long uh, name. From Evil Twin Brewing uh, in New York City. Excellent. And all I know about it is that it's an India Pale Ale, 7.2 uh, ABVs. It use, uh, uses double dry hopped. Uh, hop, it's double dry hopped with Columbus and Citra hops. And uh, that's all I got. That's all I got. I can provide you some more information about it. It is um, actually a collaboration beer that you are drinking between even is this with trillium as well trillium yep from canton massachusetts whirlpooled and dry hopped exclusively with citra hops for a pure expression of one of our favorite hops big notes of orange flesh grapefruit leche and sweet honeydew medium bodied creamy mouthfeel is 7.2 on the abvs it says zero on the ibus which is interesting because it's a an ipa so well, um, but it looks like a hazy, does it not? It d- it does look like a hazy, but I that's this, that's part of the the, the New England um it's part of the New England model brand. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, it's it's got a, a little bit of haze on it, so give it a, give it a, give it a drink. Why don't you? It's pretty good. Pretty good. Do you get that orange um, out of it? The orange, the orange grapefruit. Uh, those two things are quite prevalent. I think the what is it, leche? Is that milk? What's uh, uh, yeah? It should have some creaminess to it. I mean, yeah, it gives it a different, probably a different mouthfeel. Uh, but you don't, you know, there's no taste. It's but you do get the orange up front with like the bitterness of a of the grapefruit on the back a little bit. Mm-hmm. All but, right. Uh, no, this is a good. This is a good beer. Awesome. Well, so far, I I uncanned. I opened up the uh, the 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 new Orthodox M forty three, the 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 strawberry tight, which is a uh, New England IPA as well. Um, so, it, hold on, give me one second here. Got to check it in on on old I or on uh, Untapped, which you can. Be our friend on Untapped when you find us on there. Uh, dudes with brews on a porch. It's just as easy as that. You can see all the beers that we drink each and every week. Get all the, the good stuff. Here we go. It is. And, and on the can, it says drink cold and drink fresh. So maybe maybe that letting... Says, just, the same, says the same thing on this can. So that's, that's good that we're doing it. Um, a tart oh, wait, very, it says keep keep refrigerated and drink fresh. So it's a little sim- bit of a different rendition. Is, yeah, similar enough though. Haze is good. It says a tart variation of their flagship New England IPA M43, which I think we've had. I've had on the show before. You might have had it as well. I don't remember. Um, tart strawberry M43 has the same taste and haziness that you know and love, with subtle additions of strawberry aroma, flavor, and tartness to accentuate that addition. With this combination of Calypso, Simcoe, Citra, and um, Armillo hops, citrus, and tropical notes of pineapple, mango, and grapefruit come through in the huge yet surprisingly delicate aroma. The flavor backs these aromas with a soft, pillowy mouthfeel. Hot bitterness is not particularly intense, which leads to be a very drinkable New England IPA, even non-IPA fans love. The haze is not from the yeast, but rather from the interplay of liquids 
or lipids, excuse me, from the malted oat and oils and acids, which naturally occur in hand-selected dry hops. It is 6.8 on the ABVs, 65 on the IBUs. This is one of the cans that you have to roll before you pour because it does have sediment or sediment. A lot of people freak out about sediment. First time that I ever saw sediment in a beer on the show before you were a co-host, I freaked out and I said, what the fuck is wrong with this, with this beer? I was, I was new to the to understanding all this stuff. And then someone said, Hey, dipshit, Mr. Dudes with brews. Um, sediment is fine. You, you, you can drink it, roll the can or just let it, let it sit at the Wait, bottom. Somebody, somebody, somebody emailed, emailed you in that. No, a, a person I worked with at the time. Uh, I was going to say, if we have, if that's what we have to do to get emails, we'll say all the wrong things. <laughs> this beer is golden. What, how it should be clear. This, this beer is very, very juice-esque. Like, this looks like some... We, did we... Yeah, how did we pick the same... Like, I know you had two beers, but in reality, it's been a while since we, we've done a grapefruit... I mean, you got the grapefruit mango, I got the grapefruit orange. They're both... Uh, they're not hazies, but they're clear... You know, we got the, it's, it's the got, East Coast, the New haze England. It. Yeah. It's interesting. It's this, this is the tart strawberry, but it's got all these other citrus flavors to it. Well, or at least smells. It smells... I get strawberry, I get citrus, which is weird. Let's let's see let's see how it is. Um, also, this beer is I don't from. I think so. This this beer is from uh, um, Michigan. How is it in? Oh, it's just a New England style from Michigan. Yeah, New England IPs are uh, style. Sorry, thanks for the update. Yeah, you dipshit. Just kidding. Um, wow, it's it's not bitter at all. There's there's like a little little bitterness to it, very light on the mouthfeel. It, it's like for real, man. This is like drinking juice. This one is quite, quite similar. Um, hmm. This would be a good Sunday day drinking beer. Kind of with uh, with the smell, I get. I think I get more citrus than I do strawberry, but it's it, it's a good blend. It's tasty. I could see I could see drinking this around a fire, uh, just enjoying other people's companies. I like it. I like it. Pretty gosh darn tasty, if you ask me. So I like my chair is making a lot of noise. It's not. You're good. Yeah. So we missed last week. Um, just our, our schedules didn't line up, and our schedules aren't getting any better. Your life is improving. My life is getting busier. Um, what do we what do we do about uh, this? I I know this is it's a sat it's a rare Saturday night re- recording session. Right. Um, I was fine with recording tomorrow. It just meant I would have had to do it at uh, uh, somebody else's house, and I would have been drunk already because I planned to uh, as I did last week. Uh, it was my fault that we haven't recorded all we uh, uh, last week because I I did two pictures of mimosas uh, at a bottomless mimosa <laughs> that's all right uh brunch and and i got quite drunk and then as you i should. drank a couple of bottles of wine uh, as, yeah as you a... should i you know it's funny because that i ordered the shirt i ordered two two shirts that you can get on our tea public they look great i got a porch pint they do look great. a porch pint society shirt and then i got the the alien pixelated um shirt which is pretty cool as well um i ordered that i think last saturday and then, um, and then, uh, uh, Sunday rolls around. It didn't work out, which was fine. I was, I was happy for you. I'm glad you had a good Saturday afternoon, a good Saturday day, and just enjoyed the company of somebody who you enjoy, uh, being in company of. And I was happy about that. And then I was like, all right, well, maybe we can shoot for Monday. Monday didn't work. Cause, cause you were working, you had, you had things going on or no Tuesday. We were going to shoot for Tuesday. It was, um, but you had work. And Monday, Masson had her track meet and all that. But uh, and then I got in this weird headspace. I was like, "Is this his like? Is he quiet quitting on me right now? Is he? Uh, is, well, he was, is he about to I, leave I, the I told, show?" I told Francisco like that. You sent me that message because you uh, you were like, "Are we on for recording tomorrow?" And I was like, "Yeah, can we do it tonight? Because tomorrow I plan on being drunk again." Because we found a pretty sweet brunch spot that has live music, and I find I I enjoy bottomless mimosas. They're quite nice. <laughs> they are good. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, and 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 it's Memorial Day weekend, so right. 
uh, Monday, me and, and uh, a, a specific person not to be named have the same day <laughs> off. So it's like that day is not going to work out either. And, and uh, so it was just, uh, uh, I was like, if we could do it tonight, otherwise tomorrow I will do it drunk and I will either do it from that person's house or drunkenly bike uh, back to my house and do it here. But, and I was fine with that, but you were like, do you even want to be on the show anymore? Like, <laughs> I don't know how you meant to send it, but that's how I read it. And, and uh, uh, I was like, no, it's, it's, that is not ever the case. Uh, I very much enjoy doing the show. I just said, I said, I said, you still want to keep doing the show, right? <laughs> that's okay. What I said. Yeah. And, but I, I, I read it with a context of like, very, like, very serious, very uh, melancholy almost. <laughs> I was like, damn, I just bought these shirts. <laughs> uh, I, well, you, I, when I buy all six, all like eight shirts or ten shirt right. designs that we have, that's when you have to worry because that means I'm getting my collection on. Yeah. I'm going to put them in boxes and they'll be worth some money someday. Yeah, we're right. we're going to be a, a – a, we're gonna, we're a sleeper podcast. People will find us in ten years and go, oh, this is what it was like when people uh, weren't on fire, but they still – they had fun, but it wasn't good. Yeah. We'll be we'll be like you know how like Virginia Woolf wasn't famous until she was dead. That's when yeah. we'll find our fame. Only only in death will we find fame, and that's that's okay. But yes, I did get put in a weird headspace, and I was like, ah, oh, god. And I was starting to think like, you know, eventually this is probably going to come to an end. I don't know when, and I don't know how, but uh, we're, it we're won't g- be like that. Yeah, it won't be like that. I think we're close to eight years. I think we're yeah we're getting i mean so i mean we got been put, doing this a long time a long time push That's it for, for an sure. even 10 right yeah might as well get to 10 i'm okay with see that. Where, where that takes us uh i will say this and i just want to use this platform real quick to say one real quick thing and it might be divisive and uh some people might not go, go with me on this but i'm just going to say it get it out out of the way uh, does, do you find it strange that the guy who arrested Scotty Scheffler, uh, before the, uh, championship, the cop yeah. got suspended and, uh, he got, what's it called when you get reprimanded several times and suspended, but cops that shoot minorities and kill them don't get anything done to them for, uh, it, it, it seems weird to me. That that we live in a in a world where where Scotty Scheffler's arrest dictates more punishment on the cop than uh, uh, human death. Yeah, and and in this case, it was like Scotty Scheffler was in. He might have been confused, but he was also in the wrong. Like he, it, it was it was it was just a it was just a weird situation. I don't think he meant he didn't he wasn't he didn't mean to be malicious by any means. I think it happened all quickly, and he's like, what what is going on? And all of a sudden, he's arrested. But you're right. Um, the ones like where the cop sounded like he was actually he was doing the job he was supposed to be doing. They're investigating this horrific situation. This guy's trying to get around. It. He's like, what do you do? This is a crime scene. You know, you need to stop doing what you're doing. And again, I, I don't really I think it was just a weird situation. Um, I'm not putting blame on anybody, but the cop was doing his job, doing what he was supposed to do. Um, and then, yeah, and those all those other cases, it's like they get put on paid administrative leave you know it's administrative leave it's not it's not a suspension if even you know if you if they even have to go that far uh and it's so that's all i want to say about that it's just food (laughs) for thought for anybody listening like uh maybe that maybe you know we all know that money means more than anything it's really not a racial thing probably as much as a systemic uh uh, monetary problem where it's like oh it's scotty scheffler the golden child of the pga tour yeah, uh, but anyway, yeah, that's what that's all you can do. Um, but yeah, I've been I've been thinking about I've been thinking about a couple of different things. I've been thinking I, I I've acknowledged to myself recently that I often think about future future situations, future future self, so much that I never I never focus on what's happening now being present, being in the moment and in saying to myself, this is a good moment. Enjoy it. And I'm trying to do that more often. I'm failing miserably at it. So now I need you to make decisions for me so I don't have to think about them in the future. The path is set forward. 
Now I can just focus on the now, okay? Starting with currently, I'm not in any classes. My classes, my 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 grad program kicks back in uh, in like three weeks in June, um, in like the middle of June, and then whatever. So I got some time. Now, what I like to do when I don't have, when I'm not working and when I don't have academics is I, I do like to read. I like to read books and I like to play video games. Sometimes it's hard to do both. So, Robert, which one am I doing? Am I reading books or am I playing video games? What kind of video games do you have on your list? It's a good question. I have, um, currently, I need to, I have God of War, Ragnarok, that I need to do. All right, you can start. I have um, um, Last of Us Part 1 that I need to play. Um, I have, um, is that it? I would like to play and, and beat Borderlands 3. That's a fun game. Um, and then I was looking to maybe like trying to see if I can download Fallout New Vegas because I've never played that one. But I really I love it. I hear that one's good. I've heard that one's good. I love Fallout 4. I finally beat Fallout 4 not that long ago. Um, and I, I loved it. I love Fallout 3. I, I've been watching the show a little bit as often as I can, but I keep falling asleep. Um, yeah. Yeah. On the docket for books, I only have I have a couple on the shelf that I want to read. Um, it was like one of the as I, I've read majority of the Dexter series, which are good. Um, but like sometimes I got to the point where I was like, I'm reading too many of these. Too like I'm reading like one, two, three, four, like back, 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 back. You know, I was like, all right, I'm getting this is getting a little much. It's just getting to be a little too like repetitive. I think I need a break. So then I read the. Ex- yeah, I don't think. Yeah, yeah, I don't think you're supposed to read those back to back to back to back. Yeah. Um, so I read The Exorcist over spring break, which is awesome. Great book. I enjoyed it. Um, now I have one called A Death in the Dark Woods, which is like a uh, a murder mystery book in which um, the killer is a Sasquatch. So it's like a Sasquatch murder mystery that takes place in Door County, Wisconsin. Um, and then yeah. I have so then there's some you know other ones that I do want to I want to read some Stephen King, perhaps I've never read any Stephen King but I would like Stephen to. Stephen King, uh, I I would uh, I would recommend you read some Stephen King. There's some good some good Stephen King books. Uh, yes, I, I mean. So which one is it? But 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 your the video games on your list are pretty good. Okay. Uh, they're games that I remember wanting to play, but they were PlayStation exclusive. Uh, and me, I went with the masses and got the Xbox while you went with the logic and got the PlayStation, which is the <laughs> superior machine, probably. Um, it's a tough one. And I'm going to tell you, I, I, I want to tell you to play video games because okay. I start, I, uh, Hellblade two was just, uh, just put on game pass for the Xbox one and Hellblade is like my favorite game. So I started playing Hellblade two okay. Senua's saga. Now, do so, you... that's what? that's like a, a God of War esque, like uh, it's Viking times, uh, like mythology type game. So when you play video, right? maybe. Um, so when you so video games, I'll go with that. Um, when you play video games, do you like to play them alone? Does the person that um, like when you have company or if like say you're you're staying somewhere else, are they are they down to watch you play video games or do you have to carve out the time? I mean, what's weird is, uh, like, oh, do you mean like right now in my life or in general? Yeah, right now. Uh, by myself. Okay. Uh, I have a feel. I feel judged harshly when I say I'm going to play video games. Yeah. Uh, by this by this person that you refer to, um, the, the people out here, it's video games have a uh, uh, very negative. Like, it, there's shutting yourself away to play video games is. You know, for the people that I talk to, that's such a waste of energy and time. Why? Because uh, it's it's either people who are writers and artists and things like that that go like, why would I, why would I spend my time doing that? I could be writing or whatever. Could uh, they I be... just don't know. Like now, don't, and then there's a whole nother. You know, it's like uh, the people I work with, they just are not video game players. They don't like. Uh, uh, Francisco talks about playing some sports games now and again, but. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, it, it really makes me feel like a child when I say I'm going to go play some video games, but, uh, out here, but I have been playing the uh, Beat Saber again. 
a little bit. Yeah. Back up to the, uh, I got some expert plus uh, numbers under my belt again. Um, and then I was playing, uh, I want to, I want to get back into Resident Evil 4 on, on the Oculus yeah. or on the MetaQuest. Nice. Uh, I'm like, I'm not far into it, but I'm into it. So I'm saying video games because I'm playing video games, but yeah, I would like, uh, uh, in general, there's a few games where it's like, I think that people would actually enjoy playing them or watching them because they're, they're interesting games in terms of like puzzle solving or, uh, psychology or, or mythology in terms of Hellblade. It's like, there's cool information there and it's an interesting game. Well, and stories but too. That's, yeah, it's a good story. It's like, uh, I, I, that's why I like linear story games because it's like, it actually makes me feel like I am uh i don't care to i have anxieties of uh, making decisions in real life i don't need that in a video game i, I mean i Tell like me the side quests but i mean like I, I've, I've said this before i'll say it again i think arkham uh asylum the first batman this game fun. was uh maybe like i forget if it i believe it was the first one yeah whereas it had the perfect mixture of linear story with the riddle side quests or the Riddler side quest. I think that was a perfect game. Yeah, but you have to collect like six thousand Riddler trophies to get that to that part, which is annoying. I don't know. I hundred percented that game. <clears throat> You're crazy. Um, but uh, in, in the in the second one, they they like really added, and it was like yeah. I'm not going to be able to do this. And then the third one, uh, I can't even freaking uh, figure half the shit out that I'm supposed to do. So, um. But I, I, for me, video games have kind of fallen off. But with Hellblade 2, I've started playing again on the Xbox a little bit. Wouldn't you think? I mean, video games are like so like nostalgic for me, but I still love them. Like, I like, I do like playing online with people I know. I don't like playing with just random strangers. Dead by Daylight's fun when you're playing with friends. Um, you know, it, it brings me back to the days where I would, I would unplug, unhook my PlayStation 2, throw it in my backpack, bike across the city go to your house, go to Matt's house or go to go somewhere else. We're playing it all night and we're having fun. We're, we're taking turns with the controller. You know what I mean? Like once you die, you pass it off and you do it. In like... well, that, that, yeah. And then as you guys grew up, I watched, uh, well, <clears throat> not you so much because you took a different path, but, uh, yeah. uh, those guys, like they would, they would literally show up in their cars with their TVs and, and Xboxes all, yeah, I mean, you can easily play online on a, in a with a headset, but they would put four or five TVs in the same room, right? With their headsets on and and be playing with each other. And it's like I feel like this is more disruptive <laughs> uh, than like if you're playing Warzone. Like I don't want you in all. I want want five guys in the same room in, and on the headsets. It doesn't seem to make sense, but hey, yeah. Anyway. But I mean, I still love I love um I love video games. And same thing. I like I like the stories. I like the cutscenes. I like all that stuff. And it's it's kind of it's in some points it's like watching a movie almost, um, but and you could say you could argue that it's it goes toe to toe with reading. I would say, especially if you have a good story, you know what I mean. And if, if you can get sucked into something, absolutely. Yeah, um, and I would I would say like the people who are writers like may, couldn't you be inspired by something? Couldn't you like be like oh you should, oh wait a minute I, this story I mean, structure was unique like I could learn from this honestly. Honestly, I, I mean, me personally, there's a lot of stuff where it's like when I play a game or or because there was a while where I had like written a concept, a few like a few concepts for video games that are not like big, huge concepts. But it's like somebody made a game that that uh, like did this. And I was like, this would be so much cooler if it was like this, uh, if it was like uh, if you had the option to do all these things, it's like that's the game I want. Mm -hmm. Um and and the same thing goes for the story where it's like if there's a story that that you read and and as a writer you're like this idea is interesting but there's a completely different way to unpack it that makes uh, that I identify with more and I I would rather read and it's like everything boils down to the same four topics in this world like uh in terms of human co uh connection so we're just rehashing the same things over and over again. So I don't think that there's any shame in like getting inspiration from somebody else's thing by going like, ah, I would have done it this way. And then like kind of expounding on that. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I don't know. I okay. haven't expounded on anything lately. So don't listen to me. What do you mean? You haven't. 
Yeah, I, saw, I wrote a character thing, but I haven't really written too much uh, as of late. I haven't been writing pointedly, uh, as I like to call it. How do you feel about that? Are you okay with that? I feel fine about it. Yeah. Uh, at the moment. It's good. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think about it. Um, I think it's good to keep it in my mind, but uh, I'm working on a different aspect of life right now, and I'm happy with that. So. Good. Who knew? Huh? Yeah, uh, you 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 knew. You told me this whole time. I did. I don't know. I I'll take the credit. Yeah, uh, uh, there's a few people that told me, but I never trusted them because because <laughs> uh, they're idiots. Who, who? Yeah, exactly. But they don't see me in the mirror. God damn it! <laughs> I see you in the mirror. Because when I see you in the mirror, I see me in the mirror. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. We all... That's uh, I was thinking about. I was thinking about your uh, uh, thinking about the future too much. Yeah, and it's uh, thinking about the future is, creates anxiety. It's thinking about the past too much apparently creates depression. Yep. Now, what's interesting is like you, uh, your your foot in both both sides because when you go, I'm thinking about the future, but I'm failing, or I, I want to think about the present, but I'm failing. That's you thinking in, in the past tense. Mm -hmm. because if you if you think about your failures then you're not in the moment you got to let failures go right and every every moment you get you get a new chance to succeed so it's like you've you've got infinite failures uh, uh, if you want them exactly well and there's there, there's literally only only the present the future obviously unknown the past did it really happen there there's only there's only now there will only ever be now really you know what i mean um, true. And I'm, I'm struggling. I'm, you are right. I'm struggling with both. Um, I'm, I'm struggling with, with, but uh, you know, that's not an uncommon thing because most people, there's people that train their whole lives through meditation and, uh, you know, to like guruism or whatever you want to call it, right. Like, to be in the moment. And it's like, it's not, it sounds like a lot of work. It's, yeah, it, it can't be, it, it can't be that is. difficult, Rob. It, it just can't. Why can't, why can't somebody just like, would you, when do you, do you, uh, like do you ever feel like you're in the moment? Do you ever feel like you've succeeded? When you're running, are you in the moment? Or are you thinking about when I, other things? Does that give you clarity? I don't know. Um, I think, what do you think about when you run? Nothing. Real quick, what do you think about when you're in the moment when you're running? I just, uh, I mean, sometimes I look at, sometimes I look at the distance. How far have I gone? Sometimes I look at the time. How fast am I going? Um I never really, I never really start a run necessarily with a mileage or pace in mind. I kind of let how See, you're now, 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 now I'm, I'm backtracking. You're not in the moment when you're running. Uh, <laughs> you're too, you do, you think about the stats too much. No, I'm saying I, I, I don't think about like when I start running, I don't think like, I don't say to myself, oh, I'm going to do a 5k today. I need to do it in a, uh, in an eight, three pace. I don't. I, um, you know, sometimes I, I, I go like today, today I ran four miles. Um, the other day I ran five the day that on uh, last week, Sunday, I ran, I did a 10 K. So a little over six. Um, but the I, fact that you know, that means more than the fact that you did it. I know. Um, but it's like, uh, I didn't, you know, I didn't necessarily be like, I just kind of gauge how I feel. I, I know, like, I know the distance now, like. When I get to this point, I'm this far. Um, when I get to this point, I'm this far. And I more or less when I see those landmarks or those points, do I say I say to myself, Am I feeling well enough? Do I trust my body enough? Is my knee fucking hurting? Um can I go further or do I need to turn around and go back? Um so I do I do ask myself those questions during that time. Normally though, like I've been uh um and, you know, I just like try to get lost in the music, listen. And I try like, and I like a lot of times try to, uh, I feel like my, in my, the moment, my either. pace, I feel yeah. I feel like my, my pace like mirrors that the beat of the, of the, of the song. Or I try to like, sometimes like a song can suck me back into like the old days, but normally, yeah, normally I just don't, I don't think about really anything. Just listen to the music and, and just go. But, All right. or if I see like, I'll, I'll look around. I do, I do look for, uh, f friendly woodland creatures like, um, 
You know, I often see I mean, Cardinals. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll also say uh, I'm not the guy to ask about being in the moment because uh, I'm not that guy uh, myself. I don't know what it feels like to, to live in the moment, I don't think. I, yeah, I don't know. Does anybody? I don't know if I've ever met anybody that, that really does. Like w- Maybe when I'm on like a roller coaster at Six Flags, I'm in the moment now because I'm just like, I'm, I'm dropping down pretty far. This I think is... uh, I think the only time yeah you're only, you're only oh I think I, I just cut you off no go ahead I just think like when you lose time driving to work yeah that's you being in the moment okay. uh, it, it's literally lost you don't you're not thinking so much that you don't even remember if you ran a stop and go light or not yeah you have no like you're reckless abandon for the the laws of society like you're you're um, now that is either non-presence or complete presence. I don't know. Like, yeah, you can't tell if it was a, a speed bump or a person. Yeah, and you didn't feel it anyway. <laughs> Just fuck it. That's behind you now. <laughs> Metaphorically and and literally. Yeah, I don't need to know what's up ahead, and I don't need to know what's behind. <laughs> right. Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't know how to do it. And I. I mean. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying my best, but I, I just, I guess I don't know how to do it. Um, and I'm sure there's some YouTube videos, but I don't, I don't want to sit and meditate. I don't want to sit and meditate for 30 minutes and that, and that's it. You know what I mean? Well, there's a different, like, that's the thing too. Like, uh, to just, that's the thing, dumb thing to say. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what the thing is and I don't know what that is. Um, but for me, I don't really care about being in the moment as much as I just, I'm trying to figure out how to know what I want. Sure. Uh, you say you have a hard time making a decision. Like, uh, tell me about it every day. Somebody goes, "What are you having for lunch?" And I freaking have a heart attack, a little mini one. So I go, "Like, I, I, I don't know yet. I haven't figured. I don't know. Uh, what do you want? What do you feel like? You right. could have anything. Isn't that Still, weird? I, I, you got Is... nothing. I, I, I don't crave food. Food is just a fuel that keeps me, uh, makes me able to walk faster. That's what it should be, and that's really. I mean when you break it down all the way down, that's what it is. But you're right. Like, you're like, what, what do I want? What do I want to eat? Like, it, that's just a weird thing to think about. You know, what am I in the mood for? Theoret- I, I could eat the same thing every day and, and, and live a, a healthy life, you know? And people well, are doing like, that. Yeah. Yeah. To me, I go like, I want whatever you want, whatever, if you're happy with the food in front of you, then I'll be happy uh, eating next to you. Uh, no, and that I goes for my friends, that. that goes for my family. Like, I'll find something I like wherever you want to go, and I'll be happy that I'm not sitting there going, I picked the place and you hate it, and I know you hate it, and you're not going to tell me you hate it because people lie and they put on a good face, but, and you're going to say, oh, this is really good. But in your in your head, you're going, fucking Robert made the, what, what kind of bullshit food is this that he just picked? Nobody eats this. This guy's terrible. He is the fucking worst. That's what my head says when I choose the food. Hmm. that that's what i think the other person is thinking so it's like it makes me so much happier when the other person just goes you know what i think uh mediterranean yes yes let's do that yeah that's not really an option here no it's not no someday maybe but yeah i mean i still have i still have like a a weird a weird thing with food i i miss i miss certain food items I ate I ate some a good a, a fair amount of pizza today. It was good. It was delicious. But now I know when I step on the scale tomorrow, I'm going to want to fucking scale. punch myself in the face. Um, I'm so close for the first time in a long time, Rob, to being under 200 pounds. I'm so close, and I've just been hovering on that edge. I've been like 203 for a while now. 203, man. When I'm used to seeing two thirty two, you, you really wear, you you wear it well. Two oh three. Yeah, I didn't know you were over two. What are you talking about? I've been over two for forever, man. There hasn't been a time on this podcast where I've been under two hundred two hundred pounds. There hasn't been. This is probably the lightest I've been. Usually, I'm I'm hovering around like two twenty, two thirty. Well, I mean, you look great, but I'm just saying, you always I I, I just don't see it. I never saw it that I thought that you were in the one eighties. I wish. You, well, you'll get there. <laughs> Maybe. I, I, got, I mean, I'm one sixty. You're not big that you're not that but much bigger than me. I'm taller than you though, and I I, I have a gut. 
but you know. Well, either way, to all you people out there that are looking at numbers, uh, they don't actually matter. Uh, You're right. Uh, and I can't live in the moment. I can't live in the moment where I'm like, I appreciate this food, this pizza that I don't have to eat. Like this pizza is nothing but indulgent, um, 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 gluttonous uh, material. I don't have to have this. I should just be eating a bowl of rice. Or I should just be eating, you know, like fucking uh, steam broccoli. Steam, really, R- seriously. That's what I, sh- so I should. So good. Beans. I should be eating beans, but no. I'm fortunate enough to be in a situation where I can get in my fucking car, drive to a, a local family farm, and get their gourmet pizzas, throw it in my oven, and eat it, and eat a crab ragoon pizza. That's right. That's what I had, Rob, and it was delicious. It was amazing, oh, and it's fucking awesome, and that is so indulgent. Um, but I still can't like just grab the slice and be like, I- "I'm going to enjoy this right now, not worry about anything else in the world, not think about." It. I'm in, in this moment right now. I'm standing in my kitchen eating this pizza, and it's awesome. I, I don't do that. I just fucking wolf down, and I go, "I can't have another piece. Can't have another piece. Grab another piece, and I eat it." Can't have another piece. Can't have another piece. Grab another piece, and I eat it. And I said, "Somebody get this fucking pizza out of here, man!" Before I put it down. Well, I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. This week, I went and got a pizza. <laughs> pizza. Yeah. On my way home, rode home with it on my bicycle. Got home. How, how do you How do you carry it on your bicycle? Like how do How does one do that? Handle like seriously. A, like a waiter. Like a waiter. How How far and are you biking? You, was, uh, I had to go two miles with two it. miles like that. Yeah. You have it, so you have your your hand your hand in a ninety degree it, I have, angle. I, I have it, I have it like this, and it's resting against my chest, resting so against your chest, but long. it's underneath. And then you also have one hand on the handlebars. I so for a while, I, when I get on the bike path, I can go no handed for like six blocks at a time because there's no cross streets. Oh, well, that's nice, huh? Yeah, um, humble brag. I can I can ride my bike no handed. Same, yeah. I I feel like most people can, <laughs> but. <laughs> <laughs> but uh i know people that can't ride a bike drew you're i was right. bragging to them you're right well i don't know that a lot of people even even riding with no you know no, no handed you're still carrying a a freaking a pizza that I, that's cool. i mean i've done so i've done i've done some bad things on a bike in terms of like just stupid because it was very difficult to break very difficult to yeah whatever but either way i got it back here I feel like I ate four. I ate my four slices. That's what I always I expect. I'm gonna eat at least four. Yeah. Uh, I ate the entire. That the I just kept going back. Going, you know what? I got room for one more. I got room for one more. I yeah. got room for one more. Uh, and then I got to that last uh, the last bite. And you said you're a I piece of like, shit. I didn't take the last <laughs> bite. I left. I left like a it. quarter sized piece of crust. <laughs> <laughs> he said you know what i've i know my limits and i have had enough i am putting this I've, away I've got self-control <laughs> i've got i will not eat this entire pizza yeah uh yeah um, th- that's kind of where i get to too but then like and then like i grabbed that last slice and then i go on the i went in the garage and ate it i was like i'm like <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I was just spit beer all over my computer. <laughs> you freak. You are a freak of nature. <laughs> I'm not lying either. I really did that. I know. I was like, I was like my family <laughs> cannot see me eat another piece of pizza. It's in my hand. I'm going into the garage and pretending I'm going to do something. And I'm <laughs> I, I have to go get a screwdriver pizza. to do some tooling work. Yeah, that's what I did. And then I I even folded it so I was like, I got to eat this faster. Like, <laughs> I, I, that's, that's what happened. Yeah, it, I, can, I can see it. I can see it. It's it's seriously food. Oh. I mean, we've talked about it before. Food is like my drug. I'm, I'm, I'm off sneaking. I'm, I'm turning my back to my kids. I'm like, this is my pizza. <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll say, like, so um, we all have our things, and I feel like, so, like, for me, like, uh, sugar, eating yeah. sugar, like candy bars and stuff, like, my teeth are bad. I know that they're bad. 
And so in my head, I go like, if somebody eat, sees me eating the sugar, it's like somebody seeing a four hundred pound dude eat uh, eat an Oreo. Right. And in their head, they're going, "What a gross piece of you know, like whatever." Yeah. Uh, you, you have some self control and fix yourself, you know. And it's right. like, hey, you know, slowly roll. This is uh this is from doing meth. All right. Uh, <laughs> but uh, like legitimately, I feel like the the things that we uh, are very insecure about. They match up with something that that is thrust upon them. For mm. people who are overweight, it's eating. Even if they diet and eat less food, more healthy food, um, exercise more, but they can't keep weight off. Like there's a shame to the idea of if I eat a Big Mac, somebody that sees me will go, I "Have another one, fatty." Right. Just like uh, uh, somebody who who maybe has acne eating an oily piece of pizza would be like. They're, they're, I'm being blamed for my condition because of this, even though I use the right materials, I do everything that the internet tells me to do or right. whatever. Right. Um, and it's like, uh, uh, that's one of those things where it's like, uh, yeah, going to the garage to, from, to hide from your family who are, they're supposed to love you no matter what. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, and it's like, you're just keeping uh, 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 an open s shelf in the fridge in case they need some Capri Suns later. Right, right. You know, it's, uh, uh, no one wants that last piece put in there. Right. And you just sit there, you look at it, you're like, well, it, it's there. No one else has reached for it, so I, someone has to eat it. You know. What do you, okay? What what's harder for you? This is this is an interesting. What's harder for you to do? Take the first piece or the last piece? Huh. I think actually just taking a piece in general is, is pretty dif difficult because it's it. If you're taking the first piece, and this is you have to, to take the, taking the first serving or the, or the something. last serving of any. I think. Huh. I think taking the first would be more difficult because if there's people behind you, they're looking at you how much, how they're, much lo you take. they're looking at how much you're taking, and they're 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 gauging that. They're like, bro, took like three scoops of this. <laughs> the guy at the end ain't getting shit. Right, it's his fault. Right. Uh, like, I I recently had to when I was at that training, we had like thirty guys, and they did like. Um, uh catered you know they catered lunch for two days while we did the the training yeah and the first day i was at the back of the line uh with some bigger guys i'll say you know um and like we got there and there was nothing left of anything that was worth substance like we were eating a lot of rice yeah uh and then the second day we all went first and we all had the same thing where we were like look i don't want to screw the guy behind like those guys in the back because yesterday i didn't get you know there's one guy that was like I'm taking whatever I want. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, But it's like, you know, me, I sit there in silence and I do did the same thing where it's like uh, when you take the first piece. But I, I don't know. For me, it's like I can't I can't even decide what, what would be harder for me to do. The first is like, I don't like to go first and I try not to take the last of anything. Right. Uh, so that's uh, uh, it's that's a conundrum for we should have started the show with that question because we went through a bunch of shit to get here but uh if you stuck around uh <laughs> let, let us know let us know what the what the better if you're watching somebody what would you rather like uh i think uh, i actually think the best part to the best location to be is like the last like one third of the line not at the very end but you're like a little past the halfway point because at that point then you're looking at containers that are like borderline about to be empty right there's that corner left and you're just like all right well we gotta finish this up i gotta i gotta so then like it's okay if you finish the the container oh no because the assumption is no. going to be that it's going to be replenished no but... i can't that to me you you i'm good for, kudos to you for having that mindset but for me i'm gonna go all right there's five guys behind me or five people in the room Right. I'll take a fifth. I'll take a fifth of almost nothing, and and it'll just be a sh like if there's five pieces of shrimp, I'll take one. Mm, that that go, would be a tough right. one. Yeah. Uh, and and I like it's uh, but yeah, th those are nightmare scenarios for me when I'm told to take food first. Yeah. Or to or when you're the last one to get like or when there's 
just one thing, like a little bit left, like one serving left. And, and, and not now, if you haven't eaten, yeah, you take it, go ahead, take it. That's not a big deal. But when we're talking about a pizza situation mm -hmm. and everybody's had a couple slices and there's that long slice sitting there. Right. So I would, I would watch, I'd rather watch it go to a landfill than be, <laughs> uh, uh, than, and, and go hungry for the night. Well, the real, a real conundrum is too, is, uh, you know, when I, I, I DJ'd a wedding not that long ago. They had a buffet style. Everybody went through. Everyone had food. And there was a ton of food left, like a lot of food left. And then are you are you the first one to move in on seconds? Like, Is that, is that okay? I don't know. Well, that's, that's, this is where we get, that's where you get into that. Like, uh, uh, you know, if there's a lot of food, I'll go up for seconds. I have no problem doing that. Okay. Um. Now, if there's a lot of one thing and a little bit of something else, I'll go for the thing that there's not that rice is always a guarantee. There's going to be right, a lot of rice normal. for sure. I'll, I'll I'll I don't need the carne asada. Somebody else can come and get that, uh, but I'll take the rice. Yeah. I like rice. No, train myself to like the things that other people don't like. I'll take the broccoli. I'll take the rice. Well, this that's is, good. It's all part of living in the moment because when you live in the moment. These these situations don't matter. These yeah, the, really. Don't, do you ever see the guys that just verbosely go up and like just like don't give a shit? Yeah, they take like they're on seconds and they take the, a huge like they they'll take the last of the best thing on right. their seconds before some people got first and they go oh they didn't get here fast enough. D -d 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 -d, living in the moment. I'm just I, I'm just a guy that I wanted it so I took it and guess what? Society's not you're not going to kill me for it. You might think about it for a day that that guy did that. Hey, I'm the guy that did it. But uh, uh, it, it, like, there's things that people do that like kind of go against my rules of what I would do in 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 a in a social setting. Yeah, and I I'm envious of them for being able to just walk up and do it. Like, Me too. Uh, uh, there's a, like even uh, something as simple as now I can't bring myself to be this way or whatever. But it's like uh, like guys that belch and fart in public. Well, that's gross. But I know that's the thing. I think the same way, but there's a freedom that they have. You're right. There is. Where they don't care if it's loud, they don't care if it's wet, they don't care if it's smelly. <laughs> uh they are uncomfortable and they're not gonna stand for it. So they're gonna let out their little trumpet uh <laughs> and we all just have to deal with it. Uh I've turned this into a you problem. Yeah, you know, and it's like, really yeah, it's, it's really more like how you're you're right because all right, in that moment, somebody somebody lets out a toot, right, and it's really like you 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 more or less remember how somebody responded to it, not the not the fact that like oh there's Earl you know King ripping ass over there, tooting up a storm. There's that, but then it's like. Oh yeah, did you see how like Rob like really laid into him or Rob like looked at me and I looked at him and we we're like who's going to laugh first, you know? It's more about the response of the other people than it is. So maybe you're right, there is some freedom and there's also some power in the person who chooses to pass gas in a crowded room. That that that's a power move. It is a power move. Exactly. Damn. We're really getting down to um yeah, humanity, like the bare bones here. And uh, I think we're on to something. I think I think going forward, like instead of instead of clin clinching, you know, in those ten out of ten times, you know what? Every couple of times I'm gonna let one slip and just just see how it goes. Just, just see how it goes. See how it feels. Right. And you can always pull the Rodney Rodney Dangerfield. Uh, uh, you know, did somebody step on a duck? <laughs> line. <laughs> All right, go watch Caddyshack and tell me that guy doesn't live in the moment. Well, he's, he's dead. Well, now he's living in all the moments all at once. <laughs> he is the moment. He is the moment, yes. Yeah. I, I never thought he was that funny. Oh, I I, I think he's hilarious, but, yeah, you know, maybe. we all got our things. I, re I really did not like Caddyshack at all. Much like America when it came out. Yeah. No. Yeah, it was a flop. But not anymore. Not and that was like the like this is like 
it's like that. Cult I mean, as a, as a mo- as a movie, it's uh, it's not 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 necessarily the greatest movie, I guess. But uh, to me, it's it's iconic and it's funny and it's uh, there's so much uh, quotability and and I mean, Bill Murray's whole sh- shtick in there and and Chevy Chase's I mean, every it's a great movie. Never mind, whatever I said before, forget it. I love that movie. It's a great movie. I'm not gonna argue with you if you don't like it, but I'll just say that's where I sit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is me farting in a room, saying I love Caddyshack, <laughs> and just owning it. This is your fart. And the you... big thing that you, that anybody can get away from is, is, is like is, is the cartoonist nature of the of the gopher. Yeah. But that plays well with Bill Murray's cartoonish idea of a landscaper that uh, is willing to see for an entire country club to kill the gopher. Yeah. They pair well together. Yeah, I wasn't wasn't a fan. Also, didn't like Animal House. Yeah, Animal House doesn't. I don't know if it ages well or something. Uh, uh, it's not. That's not something that I go to uh, and watch. Blues Brothers not that good either. I'll give you that one a hundred percent. I don't get it. Uh, there, there's. I, I've seen Bruce, like, like, like Blues Brothers. Multiple times, I know people quote it, uh, but it, to me, it just it doesn't stick in my memory. I don't know. Orange whip, orange whip, orange whip, three orange whips. Why is that funny? I don't know. I don't know. Speaking of orange whips, uh, we had we had beverages in the world of the citrus, in the world of the the orange, the grapefruits, um, both of the New England IPA variety. I had New Orthodox India Pale Ale series, the M forty three, the tart strawberry. Um, from, from Michigan, I don't know if it's from upper or lower, but it's from one of those and it is old nation brewing new orthodox, but it's old nation brewing company. Very confusing on the beer title, to be honest, new orthodox India pale ale series, but it's called old nation brewing company. Which one is it? Hell if I know. Um, this was a $3 and 50 cent beer. I, I'm I'm very happy about this the the fact that the prices of beer seem to be going down. Um, it was delicious. It was good, affordable. I enjoyed it. I would drink it again. Uh, very crushable. This is a good. This is a good summertime beer. If you're looking to get in that summer mood, if you're looking to, you know, fire up the grill, watch watch you know the the biddies across the street play pickleball. Maybe you're looking to. Um, light some wood on fire, gather around with your people, gather around on the porch. This is a beer to celebrate summertime, the the rising of the temperatures during the day, that perfect coolness at night. You know, we're talking about like 60, 65 degrees, that real sweet spot. This beer is going to accompany that absolutely perfectly. It's delicious. I love it. How was yours? Uh, mine was incredibly smooth. Uh, it was, did you notice that I was, uh, not paying attention to what you were saying? You were not in the moment. Uh, well, I just got a, I got a text message from Jack that he's, uh, his buddy's new landlord wrote the uh, script for the Lost Boys and he's given away a bunch of books and he sent me a picture saying, do you want any of these books? The, so the landlord wrote the Lost Boys? Yes. And, uh. So is that like his current full time? This, 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 this is literally this is what he, this is this is literally what he put. Uh, I met Mike's new landlord. I don't know who Mike is slash neighbor, and I'm, his name is right here. But you guys can look it up if you want. Uh, anybody, I'm not going to put it out there. Uh, he wrote the script for that '80s vampire movie Lost Boys, as if he just as if he if, if he just would have said Lost Boys, I wouldn't have understood. It was right. that '80s vampire movie. Right, like that. Oh, maybe you've heard of it. Th- that old, uh, you know, that old joint. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but either way, I was looking at the books that are in that uh, uh, thing. That's a weird. T- I- I'm sorry for um, not being present while you were fine. giving your lovely because I was chiming in every third word, and it was a very lovely <laughs> uh, uh, mosaic of 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 thoughts uh, and 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 language that you put together. I think. Thank you. Um, but I drank mine. Absolutely. I would drink this again. It's, uh, this is, it's a good, um, 
I mean, the the taste was great. There was the no bitterness is uh, absolutely true. Hmm. It's got a good like it's it's kind of uh, you know you've got those really orange orangey type beers that grapefruit kind of kicks it off and gets it off that track a little bit mm-hmm. while still keeping it a good uh, uh, um, I don't know citra type beer. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I like these orange beers when I come across them, and they are actually kind of more like juicy. Uh, normally it's a hazy uh, out here. It's going to be a hazy that you that you're going to get that that taste that way. Uh, it's interesting to me. So that's something I learned today that New England uh, IPAs fall in that category, whereas out here it would be hazies or probably anywhere else, right? Yeah, I don't really know like what exactly is the difference between a hazy and a New England, but I know New Englands tend to be on the hazy side. So I don't know. Well, I drank the hell out of it. Good. Uh, you can follow us on all the things. Just go to our Instagram. Our link tree is on there. That's the best place to go. Dudes with Bruce Pod on Insta, and from there, let your let your 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 soul wander in the world of Dudes with Bruce on the porch. Um, we are the founders of the Porch Pint Society, uniting the world, creating the world, making the world our porch. One beer at a time, one root beer at a time. Um, just everyone's welcome, except for one specific group. But yes. uh, you know, we'll let you. They know. asked for it. They yeah, yeah. They ring our doorbell so often. Um, it just uh, just got to be a lot. And our youngest member of the Porch Fight Society is here. Can you say hello? Hello. Say hi. Are Rob. you raising a British child? Say hi, Rob. Hello. Say how you doing? He's doing good. I'm doing good, little guy. He can't hear me. Can because you say? He the can you say? On. Can you tell Rob you pooped? <laughs> say I pooped. I pooped. That's got to be the ending. 